Hi, I'm Annalie, and this is my YouTube knitting journal. My name is Annalie, and I live in Seattle, Washington. I have three large dogs, two teenage children, and one handsome Latino husband. It has been a while since I have recorded a video, uh, over a month. For whatever reason, I just hadn't been feeling up to recording a video for the past several weeks. Part of that is that there are other stressful things going on in life that kind of occupy my time and distract me a bit. Part of it is just that honestly I was feeling in a little bit of a slump. But today the sun is out, we have gorgeous warm weather, and I am feeling cheerful and energized and motivated and I am excited to talk about all of the projects that I have been knitting away on for the past several weeks and document this hobby, this passion of mine. So I do have quite a bit to talk about, so I think I'll just get right into it. I have a whole stack of finished objects to show off. First up, this is actually a pair of finished objects. I made a hat for my husband and a coordinating hat for myself. And as you can see, they have these somewhat cheesy, I suppose, otter in love patches on them. Uh, my husband and I, I think we're kind of one of those gushy in love couples. We've been together for about nine years, but we still like to say that we're like otters because we hold hands to make sure we don't drift apart. He bought these patches um, around Valentine's and gave them to me and I told him I would make us some hats so that we can go out in our coordinating otter hats. Now the weather has gotten quite warm, as I said, so we probably won't be able to wear these out and about until the weather cools off again. But once it does, I know we're going to get some good use out of these. So let me see. Oh, I better. My hair these days is really curly and big and poofy. And I'm still kind of learning what to do with that because up until recently my hair has always been straight frizzy but mostly straight and over the last few years it started to grow in more and more curly so still figuring out how to be a curly hair girl anyway okay so here's what the hat looks like on i've noticed people wearing hats like this with the you know kind of poof at the top it seems everywhere I look, so I guess they're kind of popular at the moment, and I think it's quite cute. Um, I did not use a pattern for these. Um, you know, I just, it's a simple hat, so this is the kind of thing that I'm able to make without a pattern these days. Um, I've made several hats in this style so far this year. The other ones that I've made though had a brim that actually folded up. So it was like a doubled over brim that then folded up so that it would be triple layer of fabric over the ears. Now for these two it's doubled over fabric for the brim but it does not then fold up again and that's because I made a pretty wide brim there in order to accommodate the size of the otter patch. So the way I made these is I just, you know, cast on in the round, knit about six inches, and then I knit around together with stitches that I picked up from the cast on edge. And that, you know, forms the double layer brim. Then I knit a few more inches and did the decreases. So pretty simple. Um, they're both made out of fingering weight yarn held double. 
and these were just really nice projects to have on the go um, you know whether I'm riding in the car on our way to Costco or I'm at a concert or something it's nice to have an easy mindless project to work on so I try to always have something like that going the yarn for each of these is like souvenir yarn so like a lot of knitters I expect when I go out of town either to visit friends or family or for some other reason I really enjoy going to a local yarn shop and buying a skein or two of yarn that then is a souvenir of the trip and reminds me of the trip so for my hat I used some yarn that I got in Ontario Canada uh, a couple years ago we went and spent some time with my husband's friends that live there we went to a yarn shop not in Toronto itself outside of Toronto a, a town I think it's called Kitchener that sounds right Kitchener Ontario I do remember that the yarn store is called shall we knit and I asked at the store if they had any yarn that was either local or unique to their shop, something like that. And I was recommended this brand. Uh, the brand is called Roots and Rain. So I believe it's a Canadian company. Um, and the yarn that I got, it's a fingering weight single, but then I held it double for this hat. So it's nice yarn. I really like the color. Um, it's not super soft and silky and drapey. I think that's okay. I don't mind that. Um, but for some people that might have more sensitive skin, I they might not like it because it's, I wouldn't say rough, but maybe stiff is the right way to describe it. At least compared to some other, you know, super wash yarns. So speaking of soft superwash <laughs> yarns, my husband's hat is made with some yarn that we got in San Diego. Again, uh, we were there visiting, uh, this time my nephew who lives in San Diego, and I dragged my family to <laughs> uh, a yarn shop there. Um, this company, or sorry, the company that produces this yarn is called Ba Yarns. So, so Ba, like the sound a sheet makes. Um, and the base is called La Jolla, which was perfect because we were in the La Jolla neighborhood of San Diego. Um, so this one's definitely very soft and silky and drapey. It's 100% wool. I don't remember if it's superwash but based on the feel of it, I believe it probably is. So these are gonna be fun, little cheesy matching hats for my husband and I once the weather gets cool. Okay, the next thing that I wanna share is something that I had started and had gotten pretty close to finishing by the last time I recorded a video. This is my Granny Square cardigan. The pattern is called Ariana and it's by Amy Christoffers. So I started this pattern because we went on a vacation to Jamaica earlier this year and I wanted a nice travel project and Granny Squares are a perfect travel project. So I got some yarns in these Caribbean inspired colors kind of to go with the theme because we were going on a Caribbean vacation and I I worked up a bunch of the granny squares while we were on that vacation and when we came back you know I worked up I think there were some more granny squares and some there's a few granny triangles in there along the edges and then with the brown you work another round of the granny square at the same time as you're working them all together, assembling them. And then the last step is that you pick up the uh, neckband slash button band and the bottom ribbing and the sleeve cuffs and you knit those. So this is, I guess, a hybrid 
crochet and knit pattern. Um, I'm really happy with how it came out and how it looks. I wore this earlier this week when I went to a Mariners baseball game. The company I work for has a suite at the stadium there, so sometimes I have opportunities to go uh, watch the baseball game in the suite and, you know, eat the food and whatnot. So I went earlier this week and some of my younger and certainly more fashionable than me co-workers were complimenting me on this, which made me feel really good. So I, I really like how comfy it is, the way it fit. It's quite heavy because crochet fabric is definitely thicker and not as drapey as knit fabric. So if I remember right, I think there were over 600 grams of yarn in this project. Let me see. Maybe over 400. Might have been over 600 grams uh, of yarn in this project. So it is quite heavy, but it, it was just right for the way the weather was a few nights ago. Of course, now the weather is significantly warmer just a few days later, so probably won't be wearing this again until the weather cools down. Um, what else is there to say about this? Oh, there are ends. There were a gazillion ends to weave in. That's because for each of the granny squares and each of the granny, you know, triangles, just right there, that was 10 ends per piece. And then plus all of the ends from the brown yarn. So I think I calculated that there were over 600 ends that needed to be woven in, in all. And given that weaving in each one takes around a minute or actually a little bit longer than one minute, that means that there's over 12 hours worth of work just on weaving in ends. That doesn't even count the actual crocheting and knitting. So that is a lot. And I know that there are methods out there for working in granny square ends as you go. You essentially crochet over the ends when you work the next round. I've tried those methods and haven't really been satisfied. I'm very finicky when it comes to my ends. I want them to be uh, very invisible and very secure. So at least for the methods that I have tried, <laughs> I find that just weaving them in with a darning needle works best for me. So that was a lot of work weaving in the ends. And then one more thing is the yarn, which I don't think I mentioned. Uh, the yarn is Cascade 220. So just a classic uh, worsted weight wool. Um, the colors are all colors that were being discontinued. So I bought the yarn from Little Knits, which is, it's an online shop. They are lo located here in Seattle, um, but I always order online and have it shipped. Um, they often have, uh, I think, discontinued yarns or they have really good deals. So these are all colors that were being discontinued by Cascade. And even though my gauge was spot on, according to the pattern, I used quite a bit more of the green yarn and of the brown yarn than was called for in the pattern. Um, and I was a little bit annoyed because I had to go out and buy more of the green and the brown. And it was hard to find because these colors are discontinued now. So Little Knits didn't have any more of the, I think it was the green, so I had to find it at another shop. That was a little bit annoying, but overall, I'm still very happy with it. The buttons on here, these are coconut shell buttons. So I thought that was kind of cool. It went with the Caribbean theme of the cardigan. Alrighty, so one thing that I've been doing on my knitting journal is I've been working my way through a pretty long list of sweaters that I want to make. So I have a queue of sweaters 
where I have the patterns picked out. I even have the yarn already. And I just need to kind of get through them all. It is so easy to get distracted <laughs> by something else that's fun and new. You know, it's fun to pick out other new patterns and to buy more yarn. And I wanted to try to work through the projects that I already had the yarn for. So I committed to going through all the sweaters on this list. And I have been using kind of a random number generator. It's a simple Python program I wrote to choose the order in which I'm making these sweaters. So at the end of the last episode or video that I recorded, um, I ran that program and I had it choose my next project, which is a sweater called Koi Vua by Caitlin Hunter. So I was excited to make that sweater, partly because I had some beautiful yarn picked out for it. Uh, last summer, I went up to Bellingham, which is a few hours north of me, and I went to the brick and mortar spin cycle shop and I bought some spin cycle dream state with this pattern in mind. And that is called for in the pattern to use as the contrast color. And then for the main color, I bought some really beautiful dusty pink worsted weight yarn because worsted weight is what is called for in the pattern from Hudson and West and the line of yarn is called Forge. So the colors looked lovely together and they were both the weight called for in the pattern. And I was excited to get started on this project. Well, I started, I started knitting it in those two yarns and I really just wasn't happy with the way the two yarns looked together in color work. Now, spin cycle, everybody, you know, kind of loves Spin Cycle, or at least they're a very popular brand of yarn. And I know that yarn weights are not something that are super well defined, but Spin Cycle Dream State is listed by, by the company as a worsted weight yarn. And I think there's a pretty uh, common consensus out there that it is definitely thinner than a worsted weight yarn. Now, the Hudson and West Forge, on the other hand, definitely was what I consider to be a worsted weight yarn, even on sort of the heavier side of worsted. So as I was working the two yarns together in color work, I just was not happy with the way that it looked. The, the yarns just were too different in their weight or thickness. So I did try again with a smaller needle. I thought knitting a little bit tighter might help, but I was still just really unhappy with it. So in the end, I decided to switch out that main color yarn, that dusty pink color for a different yarn. And I didn't have anything on hand that would work. So I did have to order some. And I ended up placing an order uh, from Knit Picks, and I will show it off in a minute. But I had to wait, you know, I think it was at least a week or two for the yarn to arrive. One thing about Knit Picks, um, they've got very affordable yarns, and I love when I can get free shipping, but the shipping does take a while. <laughs> it's not the fastest shipping, and I didn't want to pay extra to have it shipped faster. So I had to wait a couple weeks before starting that Koi Vua project. In the meantime, I had, I think it was three skeins of this beautiful dusty pink colored yarn in a worsted weight. And I thought, let's see what else I can make with this yarn. So I looked through some of my favorite patterns on Ravelry and I chose one that I thought would work really well in the yarn. Uh, it is called the Tulip Guernsey by uh, Midori Hirose. I think I'm saying that right, Midori Hirose. Um, she is a very popular designer, or at least she has a couple of very popular designs. Um, probably 
If you've been knitting for any amount of time, you've seen or heard of the ranunculus sweater. That particular sweater has never appealed to my taste, but uh, this one, the Tulip Guernsey, definitely did, and it's the same designer. I can see why a lot of people really like her patterns. The pattern was extremely clear. You know, there were diagrams and explanations of each little section and the stitch pattern was both charted and written out. If anything, I would say it was an excruciating amount of detail. And for my style personally, I would have preferred a little bit more concise pattern that was written over fewer pages. But it was, uh, you can see, tell, very, very well thought out and just a beautiful design. So I started and finished that sweater in just a couple weeks. Okay, so again, this is the Tulip Guernsey. And as you can see, it has this a uh, fun cabled pattern on the yoke. So I think that this is meant to resemble tulips, which I definitely think it does. Now I only had three skeins of this yarn because I had originally planned to use it uh, in a you know different pattern where I would have uh, supplemented it with a different yarn. So I ended up making mine kind of three quarter length sleeves and the length is definitely a little bit more cropped than I would normally wear, but I found that this is perfect to wear over a collared shirt. So I wore it to the office uh, last time I went and actually worked at my office downtown, and it was perfect. Um, I really, really do like the yarn, and I think it works well in this pattern. And it's quite a versatile pattern but I have to say the whole time I was knitting it I couldn't stop looking at the sample pattern or excuse me the sample sweater that's kind of like on the cover of the pattern I thought it was so cute the sample was knit in a bright kind of poppy red kind of orangish red color and it was a little bit oversized. It had long sleeves. It was longer. The neckline went up a little bit higher. And it was so cute. I just couldn't stop looking at it, <laughs> obsessing over it. So I took a look at what yarn the designer had used for that sample. And it was Pearl Soho Linen Quill in the color Red Poppy. It might be Poppy Red. One of those two. And so linen quill, uh, they have both fingering weight and worsted weight versions. The designer's sample was knit with the fingering weight version held double. And it was just beautiful. <laughs> that color, I don't know, it just sings to me. Now I happened to notice while I was on the Pearl Soho website browsing that yarn that they have another yarn with many of the same colorways called Twist Worsted, which was on clearance. So my understanding is that they've discontinued that line of yarn and so they were clearancing it out. So 40% off, you know, heck of a deal. And they had that same red poppy colorway in the Twist Worsted color. And I couldn't stop thinking about how beautiful it would be to have a Tulip Guernsey that's a little bit more oversized with the longer neck in that beautiful color. And here was this gorgeous worsted weight yarn at 40% off. And even though I am trying to work my way through the list of sweaters that I already have yarn for, I think in a uh, momentary lapse of self-control I bought some more yarn and then I cast on and finished a second tulip guernsey so this version is very very similar in the fit to the a sample that was in the pattern 
and I love it. I love it. This yarn is really nice. It's soft. It's 100% merino. It's a worsted weight, but I would definitely call it kind of a heavier worsted weight. Both versions of my Tulip Guernsey were knit on a US 9 knitting needle, so you know, I would maybe call it an Aran or you know, it's like an Aran, not quite a bulky weight, but just soft as can be and so far I haven't seen any pilling although to be fair I haven't actually worn this yet um, I just finished it a few days ago and you know it's too warm now to wear this but I don't care I'm just so happy to like look at it this color uh, just really sings to me and apparently I'm not the only one that loves this color the entire time I was knitting this sweater um, my husband would see me knitting it and he would just comment on the color. Oh, that's such a nice color. Oh, that's such a beautiful color. Boy, I, I might have to ask you to make me a sweater in that color. And I said, well, they happen to be discontinuing this yarn soon and um, the, the skeins that are left, you know, while supplies last, are all on clearance right now. If you really, really do want a sweater in this color, now would be the time to order the yarn. <laughs> so my husband, who can also be a little bit impulsive and in, you know, finding something that excites him and wanting to have it. So he decided that he did want a sweater like in the same color. So we ordered some more yarn uh, for him and it it just arrived and so now I have another sweater quantity of yarn that you know I probably need as much as I need another hole in my head but it's just such a pretty color and now my husband and I are gonna have I guess matching poppy red sweaters so I have not started that one yet don't intend to for a while he's still trying to decide what kind of pattern or design he wants so we'll get there. Okay, one last finished object <laughs> to show off. I have been doing a bunch of knitting. Um, I decided that I want to have a tradition where every year at Christmas, I give each of my family members a sweater that I've made, and then they can choose another sweater that they want, any sweater they want, any pattern, any yarn, and I will make it for them for the following Christmas. Um, so, you know, I've asked my, my family all what sweater they want for this year's Christmas sweater. And my daughter said that she just wanted something uh, kind of oversized, a uh, simple silhouette, you know, bulky, um, chunky, comfy, can wear it over jeans or leggings type of sweater. And we looked at a whole bunch of patterns um, on Ravelry and Instagram and, you know, just trying to get a feel for exactly what she would want. Sometimes with those really simple ones, um, it can be even more important to get the little details right. Um, you know, if somebody wants a cabled sweater, then if you get the cables right, maybe the neckline isn't so important. But for a really simple design, you just want to have those details just spot on. So she found one that she really, really liked, and it's called the Dartmoor Sweater by Kadri. Kadri is the designer. And it's a pretty basic drop shoulder sweater, but because she just really liked everything about that one, I went ahead and bought the pattern and um, I, in fact, even bought the yarn for it. I had her pick out what yarn she wanted. She wanted just a, kind of a basic brown yarn. Well, I wanted, I guess, kind of some more instant gratification <laughs> after finishing two, you know, pretty quick worsted weight sweaters. I wanted even more instant gratification instead of working on a more complicated and detailed color work pattern. So I decided to go ahead and make my daughter's Christmas sweater for the year. 
I know that sounds kind of funny, just as the weather is starting to get warm in May, I made my daughter's Christmas sweater, but here we go. <laughs> so this is the Dartmoor sweater by Kadri. So it's definitely going to be oversized on my fairly thin 15 year old daughter, but it's exactly what she wanted. And as I said, it's a pretty uh, basic shape, but one thing that makes it look really nice, and one of the details my daughter liked the most, is this feature along the back, or along the back shoulder. So I thought it was really clever how this sweater was made. You actually start with some I-cord, and instead of knitting the I-cord with uh, like double pointed knitting needles. I used one of those little knitting looms from Clover and it was perfect. So I used this little mini knitting spool knitting loom to make this three stitch I cord. And you make it just as long as you want the entire width across the back shoulder to be. And then what you do is you just pick up stitches along the I cord. And for the back, you do some short row shaping, you know, until you get kind of a trapezoid shape and then you start knitting it straight down. And then you pick up from like the other side of the I cord, the two fronts and the fronts kind of wrap around over the shoulder, you know, and then eventually you connect the fronts. And then once you get down to the sleeves, you connect the whole thing in the round and then, you know, the sleeves are pretty simple. You just, pick up around the edge and knit the sleeves down, but you end up having this really nice detail across the back shoulder, which I really liked. So uh, the yarn is a uh, cascade yarn again. Um, I also got this yarn from Little Knits. You may notice a trend here with my yarn buying habits. The yarn is called La Merino. So it's 50% llama and 50% merino wool. Um, and it's like a bulky weight yarn, and I, I really like it. It, it smells nice and uh, sheepy, I suppose, but not overwhelmingly so. I guess maybe it's not just sheepy. Maybe this is what llamas smell like too. But it's very soft, and I think is going to be a very, very warm and cozy. Christmas sweater for my daughter. Alrighty, Ooh, so many finished projects. It's great that I have all of those finished projects. However, none of those is one of the ones that was on my list at the beginning of the year as the 45 unknit sweaters in my queue that I want to try to get through. I have, however, finally made some good progress on the Koivua sweater. So first, let me show you the yarn. I mentioned that I got some Spin Cycle Dream State. And this colorway is called Nostalgia. And even though it's listed as a worsted weight, I find that it's, you know, knitting up at a gauge that I would normally classify as like a sport weight. So the color I ended up get or the yarn that I ended up getting for the main color for the background is just some wool of the Andes. Uh, this is their sport weight wool of the Andes, just in a white, plain white colorway. And these two yarns, like gauge wise, they are perfect for each other. They've been working up really nicely. One thing I will mention is that I'm a little bit scared of having the really dark red purple saturated color uh, alongside the white. So I took all three skeins of my spin cycle and I soaked them and I rinsed them and I soaked them and I rinsed them and I soaked them with uh, the shout color catcher sheets. So if you haven't heard of those, they're, they're 
they look like dryer sheets and they advertise that you can put them in the laundry and then you can wash your colors and whites together and any dye that leaches out of the colored laundry should be absorbed by that little sheet instead of by your white laundry and there was a little bit of bleeding i don't think it was like an excessive amount of bleeding so hopefully i got all of it out once the project is finished and i go to wash and block it again i'll go ahead and throw in one or two of those color catcher sheets you know hopefully if there is any additional bleeding of the dark yarn it won't stain the white yarn so fingers crossed okay i kind of wish now that i had taken a picture of the way that the fabric looked when i used the yarn i originally planned to use in this project because it did not look nearly this good but here we go this is the beginnings of my koivua sweater and I am so, so happy with how it looks. You know, and of course, color work always look, stranded color work like this always looks better after you wash and block it. Um, but even now, I think it looks pretty smooth. I love the gradual, subtle color change of the yarn. You know, it definitely doesn't look overly stripy. It's a pretty cohesive, uh, color but you do see little gradual shifts and it's just so pretty i just love it um one thing that i did and i do this with a lot of things that i make is i pay really close attention to the symmetry i really like making sure that things that i make are symmetrical unless they're you know deliberately asymmetrical um, i think i shifted the beginning of round over by one stitch so that the the rib on the neckline would line up completely centered with the design as i was scrolling through and looking at other people's projects on ravelry i noticed there were a few and probably i'm a little bit nutty for even noticing this but there were a few where i could it was really obvious to me anyway that you have this uh, three by one ribbing and it just wasn't centered with this first color work design. And I don't know if that makes sense. And it just, it, <laughs> it bugged me. So I did uh, like shift the color work over by one stitch. I have one round to go before I split for the, split the body and sleeves. And then I'm going to have to make a decision because this portion of the color work, it's work, it's got um, an odd number of stitches or, you know, it ends, I'm sorry, it ends with an odd number of stitches. But the next portion of the color work after the split for the sleeves is worked over an even number of stitches. So it's not going to be able to be perfectly 100% lined up. And so I either need to decide that I'm okay with that because I'm pretty sure literally no one else would ever notice, even with me mentioning it, especially because there's going to be this like space between the two color work charts. Or I'm going to modify the chart so that it is worked over an odd number of stitches instead of an even number of stitches so everything can be perfectly aligned. I haven't decided yet. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm going to sleep on it. One other thing I will mention is that the pattern does have some textured, just uh, knit and purl textured designs in these uh, portions that don't have the color work. So this portion up here, and then down here. I, I didn't care for the look of the texture design. Um, I thought it was just a little much to have kind of the texture going on at the same time as, you know, the pretty striking color work design. So I chose to not do the texture design. However, I did do one round of pearls up here, and then I did 
two rounds of pearls, uh, or I guess they're two garter ridges because they were separated by a knit round down there. So it gives it like a little bit of something, but um, I like I like this a little bit better than the textured pattern um, that is on the chart that's written in the pattern. Alrighty. <laughs> So I'm well on my way with this guy, finally, after you know a couple of uh, false starts and having to order new yarn. I certainly think I can be done with this by the end of the month. And then once this is done, that means I will have crossed off four out of 45 of those unknit sweaters in my queue. I do have another couple of projects going at the moment. I always seem to have multiple things on the needles. I have another pair of socks that is my current on-the-go project. Uh, nothing really interesting to show yet on those. It's just a basic pair of socks. And I've also been working on the Agneta cardigan. This is a pattern by Petite Knit. And I have finally finished the body and bound off the bottom ribbing. This guy, I, it's just a lot of work. It's very, very polished, every detail. Um, you know, just down to how you, you know, work this double knit button band at the same time as the brioche body. And then you kind of put those stitches on hold because it's gonna be a different gauge when you're working the ribbing. And, um, you know, it's, it's beautifully written, beautifully designed, but definitely a time-consuming project, and I'm not rushing to get through it. But um, I do feel like I need one more sweater project to work on. I find myself itching to cast on something new. So I think that what I'm gonna do is go ahead and run my little computer program again and have it randomly choose the next project out of my queue for me to get started on. So I'm gonna go get my computer so we can do that. Okay, I've got my computer and I'm going to share my screen. This is always so exciting. Okay, my next project is going to be the Camaro sweater designed by Tannis Lavalie, and I am going to be using Knit Picks City Tweed. This is gonna be fun. This is a pattern that I have owned for at least a couple of years, and I've even owned the yarn for it for a couple of years now, and it just keeps getting, I guess, pushed further and further onto the back burner as I find new and other exciting projects to work on. So working on this one is really going to uh, accomplish that goal of getting through that queue of 45 unknit sweaters that I started the year with. I'm probably gonna cast that on tonight, I think. My husband and I have a TV show that we wanna watch, so it'll be a perfect project for me to get started on while we watch that together. And I will be back pretty soon to hopefully show you some more good progress on my Koivua sweater, as well as the start of my Camaro sweater. Thank you so much for being here with me. I am really having a fun time making these videos. I'm doing it for myself, but it's fun to know that there are other people out there that enjoy it as well. Until next time. Bye.